Next up is a woman, a pretty extraordinary woman, who has done things that not many women do. She has, as I mentioned before, kicked through some glass ceilings with those combat boots of hers. I am delighted to introduce to you Bernal Trustee Rear Admiral Patty Wolf. I do not come bearing gifts, unfortunately, and following Emmy is really, really difficult. <laughs> um, before I start my uh, prepared remarks, I'd like to ask if there are any women veterans in the audience. Could you please stand up? Anybody else? One back there? Okay, stand up. Stand up. Okay, so I, I'd like to start that this is Women's History Month, and the theme for this year's Women's History Month is Women Trail... Uh, honoring women trailblazers in labor and business. I'm from Florida. This week in Florida, by decree of the governor, is also Women Veterans Recognition Week. And I have been, I think I'm on number four event for that one, last one of them tonight. So if everybody would give the veteran in, the women's veterans in the uh, audience a round of applause. And what's your name and what service? Hi, Dixie. I'm Navy, too. So, hoorah. <laughs> okay. So, um, I think uh, if you see a, a female veteran this week, please thank them for their service because they truly are trailblazers. Tomorrow night at the gala in Jacksonville, Florida, we have four World War II women, women veterans who are joining us. And just do the math. Every one of them is more than 85 years old. And talk about trailblazers. So to start my remarks, I am so thrilled to be here at Bernal. I am a 1987 graduate of uh, the Bernal's MBA program, and I get the opportunity to come back for Board of Trustees meetings twice a year, but it's really an honor to, sit here, to be here today and talk about leadership with uh, the, the women in the room, and the men too. So I love shoes. I grew up in a family of five, and uh, unlike Amy, I'm the oldest, and I have three sisters and a brother. So I come from a family of girls. My sister Meg is sitting in the audience, and we all love shoes. And my sister Kathleen will tell you that shoes are the best piece of clothing she owns, because whether she gains 10 pounds or loses 10 pounds, her shoes always fit. So as I look, think about shoes and growing up as a girl, in a family of girls, I can't help but wonder as I look back on it, is how come my career, in my career, I ended up wearing these for better than that. So the leadership in combat boots. Because I will tell you that this was not the plan for my leadership as I graduated college uh, and as I moved on for my career. And Betty Norton, where are you? Is she in there somewhere? I can't see. All right, anyway. She asked me at the break, she said, why did you join the Navy? And I said, I told her I was going to tell her during the course of this speech. And I joined the Navy for the God's honest truth for the money. It was the money for college, because obviously our military are not paid that well. But I, being the oldest of five, with a dad who was a, Navy, oh, it was a New Jersey State Trooper, I needed a way to pay for college. So when my career counselor in high school suggested I apply for these scholarships that would give me a full ride, I applied for the Air Force and the Navy, and the Navy came through. I had absolutely no idea what I had gotten myself into. <laughs> oh my God, all I did know is one, I didn't have a college bill when I got out, and two, that I had a job on the day I graduated, at least for the next four years. I owed the Navy four years. So the right question, Betty, is not why I joined, because it was kind of mercenary <laughs> from that perspective. It, however, was why I stayed for 32 years. The Navy, the Army, the Air Force, all of the military services offer opportunities and challenges, like you see at other companies, but in very different ways. They are, however, one of the few organizations in the world, in the country, 
where you get equal pay for equal work, being male or female. I got paid the same as my male counterpart at every stage in the organization. Now, that's a good thing, yeah. However, you do have to realize I was one of the few females in many of those organizations. We had lunch today. I was thrilled to absolutely be sitting at a table of all women. It was great. My first duty station, I went to a ship, and I was uh, one of four women on a ship of 800. Most uh, everybody that worked for me was male, all 60 of them, equal opportunity. If you want lots of challenges and lots of opportunities, I got it, 60 people working for me. I was 22 years old. Every one of them was male, every one of them was older, and I learned a lot. I learned about a lot about like leadership. I learned not to cry in front of them. I would find my stateroom very quickly if those things are gone. So those first number of years in the Navy were all about learning how to be a leader. And the military services were very good on education. I have been to many, many classes and schools to UNC Chapel Hill for leadership courses, to Harvard Business School, uh, executive courses all over the place. And they all offer a number of different things. And they give you the tools and the possibilities of what your leadership could be like. I learned lots of things. I learned to listen first before I talked. I learned to trust yet verify. I'm a logistician. I got to trust you to do your job. However, I got to verify you did it because in the end, I'm responsible. I'm the boss at different levels. Use data. Make decisions on 80% of the information. I could tell you how many different schools I went to and I had all these things swirling around in my head. In the military, we encourage people to ask why. To, to know their jobs, yet we demand that when we order you to do something, you do it and you do it fast. And I will tell you that that is a safety thing. Don't ask me why. When I say run, jump, and get into the bunker, don't ask me why first. You can, we can talk about it later. But from a safety perspective, leadership and authority has to be ultimate and complete. But you have to develop your leadership style so that folks will trust you when you say jump, because jump is really important and you need to know what you're doing. I did not find and truly develop my leadership style until about 15 years into my career. At that point, I had, was assigned as the future commanding officer of a Navy, Navy cargo handling battalion, an operational unit of about 250 people. A good portion of them, 10% of them female, the organization had opened up to females in the mid 80s. And the challenge with taking on that particular unit was that they had just failed, I mean failed, their operational readiness exam. So I was going in to take over an organization whose morale was low, who had just seen failure, and who I was expected to bring back to full strength, back to the field, because we were wearing combat boots, in nine months and do it again. So I had the opportunity to sit down and talk to my mentors and talk to the people who had failed them and talk to you about why this, organ this group of 250 sailors had not done well on their exam. And they told me that the sailors individually knew what they were doing. They knew how to move cargo. They knew how to drive trucks. They knew how to load ships. And all, they knew how to communicate. Unfortunately, I could not put it together and make it work in a timely and executionable manner. So as I prepared for that job, I reflected on how I was going to do this. I'm a 15-year naval officer, brand new uh, Navy commander, definitely mid-grade, you know, in a 15 or 32-year 32, 32 career. And I sat down and I said, I got to figure out my leadership style. What's going to work for me? What's going to work for them? And I think that was the first time in that 15 years where I really sat down and kind of wrote it out 
and said, this is the way Patty Wolf is going to work. So I came in and I said, okay, for us, for me, I learned the power of we. I need you to do this. How are we going to do this? What happened that we didn't make it? How are we going to fix it? And I will tell you that became my leadership style, the power of we. As I talked to the young officers who worked for me and they'd say, I need them to do this. I'd say, step back and said, what do we need to do? As we talked to the sailors who had to do the job, is how are we going to make it better? What did we do wrong? What, did, what are we going to do to correct it? And how are we going to succeed? And for that battalion, it worked really well. I turned around and passed the exam with flying colors nine months later. later. And I will tell you, I honestly just had to step back and watch them do it. I empowered them. They empowered themselves. They took responsibility for getting the job done. And I was so very, very proud of them. And when people ask me to this day what my most memorable moment in a 32-year career was, being you know, commissioning, being promoted to admiral, everything in the middle, is that point in time where the evaluator said, pass. And I think the whole 250 sellers went, yay! <laughs> it was awesome. So I carried the power of we to all of my jobs after that. It worked for me. I found my light leadership style. And I carried it to the next commands, and I carried it to uh, my executive level jobs where it worked in small teams of 20 and 30 people who were trying to make changes across organizations of 4,000. Complex organizations that had people problems, that had computer problems, had computers that problems we didn't know existed until we un unwrapped them. Um, and about two years ago, I went back to the Defense Lo Logistics Agency from where I retired, and I ran into one of my small teams that, were tr that had been working on making very large changes to our acquisition process. Very difficult in a large group. There's a lot of laws involved. There's a lot of computer systems involved. There's a lot of whatever happened the last 20 years that wasn't documented involved, a lot of that kind of thing. And I was there for a friend's retirement, and several members of my team that I hadn't seen in about a year and a half came up to me, and they said, Admiral, Admiral, we did it. We got this process changed. It took four years. Four years earlier, nobody thought they could do it. And through the power of we and perseverance, they were able to do it. So as I go into my post-Navy career, consulting, nonprofit, and a whole lot of personal travel with my husband. I take along the power of we, how we works for everything. It's not what Patty wants, it's what we need, what we want, how we are gonna do it, how we are gonna succeed. So I pass along today to you just the way that my leadership style evolved, and it took a long time. It wasn't something that I knew innately the first day I started my career. It took 15 years for me to figure it out, and then I developed it, and it became part of me. And I think if you talk to the people who worked for me over the years, they'll say, it's all about the we. So as I put the combat boots back into the bag, because I don't need them anymore, and honestly, I had to go borrow a pair. I gave them all away. <laughs> Yesterday more, I had to go borrow a pair from someone. Um, I'm moving on to new challenges. I'm taking the power away. I hope that you all consider figuring out what your leadership style is. Maybe prior to 15 years into it, a little sooner than I did. But I would encourage you to think about the power of we as part of your leadership style. Thank you, Admiral. What did you all have loved to have seen her in action while wearing those? <laughs> Thank you so much, Patty.